Hi, I'm Dr. Gemma, and welcome back to Cognitive, the Knitting Psychology Podcast. Cheerfully and somewhat irregularly in business since 2008. Segments today may include what's on my hooks, needles, and spindles, a strategy, something I really like, put a lid on it, oh shoot, and blather. So sit back, put your feet up, pick up your knitting, crocheting, spinning, weaving, or dyeing, (laughs) or any other yarny thing you're doing, and get ready to enjoy. Hello, it's Dr. Gemma, and welcome to episode 148 of the Cognitive Podcast. I think this one is called Puttering, and you'll see why when we get to the strategy, but this has been a week of it. And I am very pleased with the first picture, which is my husband on the floor in front of our towel warmer. He is wrestling with Captain, and Minerva is trying to intervene because she's jealous. Captain and Minerva and my spouse have this thing every night. I'm lying in the bed there next to my side of the bed. And they all have this thing about who's going to get attention in the bed and around the bed. So this is a nightly experience. And it's just one of those lovely habits of life that you have to adore. Your comments are very welcome. Please feel free to comment on the blog itself, on the show notes, or on our group on Ravelry, which is fittingly called Cognitive, I believe, with the K, of course, in front of the knit part. And also, I'd like to give my warm thanks. I've had a a very thankful weekend, to be honest. But of course, as always, everyone who is supporting Cognitive Fiber Retreat 2023, Alpenglow is bringing some very cool tools. Very cool. Now, I'm bringing in some of my chatelaines, and I'm looking at her tools going, I wonder if I could hook that up (laughs) to my chatelaines. But I, I think the interesting thing about this particular CFR is we seem to have some interesting tools coming in, as opposed to just yarn. Of course, candles, as brought to us by our own Tina, well, there are tools for all sorts of wonderful things, really, when you think about it. That, and they may not be knitting tools, but they're certainly relaxation tools, and we'll be relaxing, too, at CFR 2023. But anyway, we've got some cool stuff coming this year with the vendors. Meanwhile, Chris Ah took a look at the pictures I'm going to show you below in something I really like. And she translated the labels for us, and I'll talk about that more. But thank you, Chris. And also thank you for the beautiful pictures of your insanely beautiful children, because, you know, that sort of thing just turns me into a, well, into an emotional mess. And Yarnopoly today, Yarnopoly. I went over to Starbucks for their monthly meeting. They're just such a great group. And it was a small group today, but very charming. And in the middle of it, one of them, very unselfconsciously said, well, our little crocheting group. And at this point, I looked down at the knitting in my lap. It was the classic moment of, I have just brought a gun to a knife fight. I had so much fun with them. They were just really great. Few of them are looking to be at CFR 2023. I am pretty excited about that. Oh, did I mention CFR 2023? How many times in the first Three minutes, I don't know. But at any rate, all the information is available on Ravelry in the Cognitive group. There is an info thread there. In the show notes, there is an info thread right there. You can see all info is right here, and here is the link, the word here. And in case you're wondering, I am talking about our blog at cognitivepodcast.blogspot.com. Do not forget to put the K in Cognitive right before the knit. Okay, so CFR is puttering right along. I still have things to do to prepare, but it's getting pretty exciting. People are starting to wake up and talk about joining the fun and put their oar in for various things that they want to do. So this is much happier for me. We need your attendance fee. If you haven't paid your attendance fee, you're not on the list. I believe we have six openings because I think I just got another person today. And that's very wonderful. The vendors are all confirmed. Lisa Souza Yarn, Oink Pigments, Tina Soap, Laser Sheep Yarns, and Alpenglow. So I'm pretty excited. This is a really good group. If you're going to get five vendors, man, 
these are the five. We also still have the information up as we will continue to post for our wonderful colorway from Disney Blonde Studios, the sea glass colorway, and there's also the bag there, the pattern bag. And the pattern bag and the shawl pattern are coming from Brenda Castile alias Good Stuff. And she's got kits and you can see all the information on this on the thread on Ravelry. She will reduce some of the cost because she's just selling through that information thread. Please go look over there and see it. This stuff is beautiful. She just, I think, posted a picture of a swatch of that delicious colorway. So this is very exciting. We also know Laser Sheep has said that she's going to do a colorway. I'm hoping to get a picture of that soon. I think she's finishing with Knit Disney, which is this weekend, which I was not at because I had too much stuff I had to do locally. That was really hard, but hey, I at least got to go have fun with the Yarnopoly gang. Meanwhile, activities, the mini skein swap is still on. Please remember 25 grams minimum for your mini skein. That's going to be about 100 yards in fingering weight, and we do want fingering weight. There are a lot of patterns available on our information thread for these. So please, please, please bring your yarns and get ready to trade. The goodie bags, I am still working on those. We do have the links of everybody who has offered to put stuff in our goodie bag. So I'm kind of excited about that. Meanwhile, classes, we know we're having a steaking class. That's going to be Jasmine Nitmore. I'm going to do a meditation class. That's going to be yours truly, of course. Very simple and straightforward. I would kind of subtitle it Western meditation as opposed to Buddhist or anything else. We are going to have skills tutoring groups. This came up on the information thread where somebody said, can people just say I need this skill and other people can volunteer? Yes, we'll probably run that in our opening meeting, which means I'm seeing us as doing something like doing the opening meeting and then going in to see the vendors. And then from there, probably going to just do the steaking class and then the meditation class, I would think. None of this is firmed up yet. Please forgive me if I change this without thinking. But you get the idea. And then after all that, we'll have our skills tutoring group. We will probably organize the skills tutoring group during that first meeting. So what did I just tell you? The opening meeting is going to be at 9 a.m. out around the pool area. And that will give the vendors a chance to set up in the room. And then from there on, we'll probably be migrating between our rented room and the patio area for these classes, depending on what the weather is like. Meanwhile, there will be a yarn exchange. And that means you just bring yarn you don't want or that you're willing to trade or give away. And we will have a table, I expect, devoted to this. And you're just going to, you can trade and stay there with it, or you can just put it down and walk away. We are not going to give this to Mother Bear because we have someone coming who wants to give it to a kid's knitting class. And that's as good a thing as you're ever going to get. That's a great charity right there. However, it is still true. Bring a mother bear, get a free raffle ticket. Your mother bear has to be completed. There's got to be a face on it. Not part of a face, not one foot undone. It's got to be completely cast off and have a face on it. Okay, so this is pretty exciting. Uh, what else did I miss? Any? No, I think I got everything there. So meanwhile, you're wondering, what's on my hooks and needles? Well, I haven't finished anything, but I'm having a darn good time of it, I must say. So in progress, the Stash Toss 2023 is at 13 skeins in versus 58 skeins out since January 1st. These are all skeins that were completely started and finished in the calendar year 2023. So other skeins that I had partway finished on projects are not counted in that. So as you can imagine, we suddenly can really see the difference around here. And I am so excited about that. Getting room in is great. I did get the two skeins of Sunset Yarn from Malabrigo Rios. Who did I order them from? Simply Sock Yarn Company. And I'm very happy about that. I have not yet gotten the blues from Lisa Souza. I will get them delivered at the fiber retreat, but I'm very pleased because I have counted the two skeins of sunset yarn 
in the stash toss, but I have not yet counted the undelivered yarn from Lisa Sousa, but I will. But this is pretty cool that, you know, when you have a net loss of 45 skeins, you really do begin to see it in your stash. I'm very, very happy I'm getting room in the study. Meanwhile, the Llama Love sweater, I'm on Sleeve Island. I have half of the first sleeve done, and I stopped. That's also Lisa Souza, the main color there, that beautiful foxglove pink. And I'm concerned that I don't have enough for the sleeves. It's going to be close. So I wanted to stop with the half sleeves and then think about the bottom half because I may be using the other yarn that I use for the neckline colors. I may be putting in extra llamas, blue llamas, pink llamas, hearts, all sorts of goodies. So hopefully that will stretch the yarn I have. This is going to be close. But anyway, I'm really just loving this sweater. It's very strange because it's on size sevens. So this is a very fine gauge. And I usually don't make my sweaters quite in so fine a gauge. So I'm kind of enjoying this one, but it feels strange in my hands. The Superstition sweater. I'm working my way down the collar of beautiful Fair Isle. And I'm on the cats and the cats are quite large. They're like 20 rows. So you can see the cats in there about 10 rows in. I think now I've got about seven rows left, but I really love these cats. They're coming out very cool looking. Otherwise, after that, it's just two sets of Peeries. That is small patterns that take two or three rows. So this should be pretty cool. You can still see the books that were helpful and the video and the, that I used for these two patterns. The Pennsylvania Dutch embroidery, not yet, which is too bad because I want to design a sweater around it. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no ambitions here. Dizzy Blondes. I've got a lovely bag full of Minerva fur that needs to be combed out and then spun. I think drop spindle spun and blended with some of my plain yarn from straight up white wool. So I'm looking forward to that, but no real spinning right now. Somebody has asked for a class at CFR on setting up your Nano. I have a Nano that needs to be set up, so maybe we can sit down and do this together, my friend. We shall see. But let's move on to the strategy. And the strategy is following in the last two episodes. Now, you know, one episode, I talked about managing your social media. And then the next episode, I talked about managing boredom, which is what we are using social media to fill, particularly when we doom scroll. So I started thinking about the issue of boredom and thought, well, what exactly after 63 years of spinning around on this orb, what exactly do I do with boredom? And I realized one of my favorite hobbies is called puttering. That is P as in Peter, U, T as in Tom, T as in Tom, E-R. Yes, putter. Not buttering. That's about toast. Okay, puttering. And I thought a lot of times when I'm bored, I will simply putter. So I will walk around the home and the ranch looking for little things that take a few minutes. And part of that is often I will dress to please myself. I will do little things to manage my health, like take a vitamin D pill or drink my apple cider vinegar. Only a shot. I will not kill you with more ACV stories. And I will also just go and look for things we don't need and get rid of them. So I may walk into my closet and put one item on the floor, which is a signal that I want to give this to charity. Then I'll look at my closet and go, I'm never wearing that. I need to get that out of here. I also will work on my skills quite often. I may come in and I may just study a vocabulary unit of ASL. I may come in and I may just knit for a few minutes, or I may make some tea, or I may take some pictures for the podcast or I may edit a few minutes of the podcast. And also puttering includes the goofy stuff, like on birthdays, we have the epic silly string fight, but you know, sometimes we just do that around the house for fun, not silly string. We have to do that outside because it's hard to peel off all the baseboards and stuff, but generally just silly or fun things to relax. So when you're thinking, I want to do something because I'm bored, Puttering really doesn't include social media because puttering, you do get something done, even if you're just changing your clothes to get more comfortable or putting on clothes you like. But you get a little bit done here and there. And puttering is a remarkably effective strategy, particularly if you have kids. 
If you have kids, you don't have time to commit to big projects because you have kids, you're watching them. So a little putter here and there will go a long, long way. The other thing is I consider health in my puttering. Now there's projects for my health, like going for a run. That's me committing myself to an hour or so of doing something. But a lot of times in the puttering, I'll just stretch or I'll meditate for a few minutes. Or I'll, like I said, I'll just take my apple cider vinegar or something. But every now and then in the midst of my putter, I do try to think of my health. So I want to suggest to you that you develop the habit of puttering. Instead of trying to commit to a big project and feeling overwhelmed, you sit down and you just do another row on the color work of your beautiful superstition sweater. Or you go into the kitchen and you see the dishes next to the sink and you just wash them or put them in your dishwasher, whatever you're doing. But a little bit of puttering goes an awfully long way. And I find when I have days like today where I'm doing a lot of puttering, I get a huge amount done, but yet I don't feel like I've done much. And you'll hear a lot about my puttering when I get down to the blather. There's often a huge amount of putter in my blather. And the funny thing is people are always saying, wow, you get so much done. And the answer is, you'd be amazed how much of that is simple putter time where I'm just enjoying myself doing a little here and a little there. On to the fluffy books. Well, I'm reading the first of the Smythe Smith Quartet by Julia Quinn, which are the third set of Bridgerton books, I believe, that she wrote. Now, to read the Smythe Smiths, you have to read the Bridgerton books first, or you won't be getting a lot of the jokes. But I have to tell you, the first book is simply hysterical. When you're in the heads of the Smythe Smith debutantes who have a family tradition of making this musical quartet while they are debutantes. And then every time somebody gets married, a younger cousin gets moved into the quartet. And of course, the terrible joke is they're horrible musicians. There's usually only one out of the four in the quartet who's even competent. And the other joke is the rest of high society, the ton as it were, feel that they must go to these musical gala nights that the Smythe Smith family host. And of course, the older women of the family are all nostalgic about the days when they were in the quartet. So they see it as really wonderful and they believe everybody in high society is living for their musical galas. I have to tell you, it is simply hilarious, but you're not going to get a lot of it until you read the other books. That being said, I'm deeply enjoying this book. Meanwhile, I'm also reading Frog Kisser and I'm just puttering through it because I got interested in both books, but yes, Frog Kisser, I'm still recommending. Something I really like, okay. Remember when I was watching Thermai Romai Novi, the Japanese anime, and at the end they had these little documentary bits about the author of the manga going to actual Japanese springs. Well, at the last one, they mentioned that there are bath salts, that the springs themselves sell bath salts, and they seem to be kind of scraping the mineral products up from the spring and dehydrating it and selling it as a powder. So, of course, I went looking. Well, I don't know if I actually got the real thing. That's part of the joke here, but I went on Amazon and found things. I just entered Japanese bath salt and put the word onsen, O, N as in Nancy, S as in Sam, E, N as in Nancy, and just put that in and came up with some things. And I started with this one company called Earth and got their packet, having no idea what it said, because it's all in Japanese. And this is why I was thanking Chris Ah because she ran it through Google Translate which I didn't even know you could do. So you can see the original, the front and back in a double picture under something I really like. And then you can see the translated version. Thank you, thank you, Chris. It's a good translation too. It's very clear and interesting. Now I have to tell you something. These things are phenomenal. I have the link to the first set that I used and it's all different colors. I think it's 15 for 13 bucks. So the price is great, but oh my gosh, the bath salt is great. These things are very inexpensive compared to bath bombs in America. And I can't even describe how wonderful this was. The first one was in a red package and apparently it thinks it's cherry blossom. And also the selection of salts 
are based on this idea of you're going on a tour of the outdoor hot springs of Japan. And so the first one smells like cherry blossoms. I tried the green packet yesterday. It smells like fir trees or pine trees. It really does, but it doesn't smell like you're taking a bath in Lysol. These things are wonderful. I come out of these feeling amazing. My skin feels amazing. My body is reacting to it really well. And yes, there is Epsom salt in it, which is explaining a lot of what my body is doing. It's a magnesium float. This stuff is great and the price is phenomenal. So I really want to recommend these. My one regret, these little plasticky bags they come in, I don't think they're recyclable. The box is, but these individual servings, not so much. I'm not real thrilled about that for environmental impact, I must admit, but I have to tell you, if you need an Epsom salt individual bath for a good price, this is the one. And this is the kind of thing I would take these with me to a hotel, as long as there's a bathtub in my hotel room. If you want a refreshing bath away from home, these are really good size packets, really well sealed and all that. And the smells are fantastic. The link is in the show notes. I love these things. Put a lid on it. Well, I went back to the tea tastings and I went to my individual autumn teas from Plum Deluxe. And you can see the pictures there. On the left, we have Autumn Vibes. No. <laughs> now, what's sort of sad here? Autumn Vibes Black, it's called. This thing smells phenomenal. It has one of the best fragrances I've ever snorted in a Plum Deluxe tea. So they really scored on the odor here. But the flavor is what I would call musty. You can always sort of tell when they load up the cinnamon chips, you get the feeling that mm, the taster wasn't as thrilled. This thing is intended, I think, to have apple and hazelnut and pecan. I am not a big fan of pecan in my teas. And I often find they're using cinnamon chips a bit heavily for me, which is odd because I love cinnamon, but this one just didn't work as a flavor. It was decent. I choked it back. I didn't throw it away or spit it out. But it's just not worth it to me. But man, I got to admit, it's got a fantastic odor. I could take this stuff and just put it in a diffuser and make my house smell like this. I'd be really happy. But drinking it, no. On the other hand, the other one I tried was Spicy Caramel Apple Herbal. I did not find it spicy, but boy, I like this one. And you know what the first ingredient is? Cinnamon chips. So I sound like an idiot. But this one is great. The smell is nice. It's not standout, but it's pleasant. But I really enjoyed the flavor on this and it's a very nice herbal. Also, this is a hot tea. Don't waste your time putting this into an iced tea. I just think the best of it would be lost. It is part rooibos tea, which I rather like. Cinnamon chips, apple pieces, a little bit of ginger, but you don't really catch it. Very subtly done. Cardamom, you do taste, which is nice. Orange peel, I did taste. Very nice. Calendula, and then some caramel essence. They say natural caramel essence. Okay, kids, caramel is burned sugar, so I don't even know what natural caramel essence is, except Plum Deluxe says it doesn't add sugar to its teas, so I'm assuming it's some kind of chemically created, except they're saying it's natural. You got me, but spicy caramel, apple herbal, it's one of the good ones. And I think this one is meant to be enjoyed hot. On to the blather, Captain and Queenie. Queenie needs her annuals, oi. Trying to squeeze that in. Now that I'm Monday to Friday, a little more challenging. On the watercolors, I decided to try one of Andrea Nelson's projects. And this is using painter's masking tape to create birch trees. And I really had a good time playing with this. I tried it on big paper, like 9 by 12 or something. I don't like working that big, but I wanted to fool around with it. It's not a great experiment. The moon is behind the birch, as you can see. I really rushed it, and I really needed to go more slowly because I don't like a lot about this one. I experimented with light direction. I got it wrong. Like, I suddenly realized I've got the shadow of a birch tree leaning right across what should be the path of the moonlight, blue vat. The birches that are not running right off the 
frame. Uh, no, shouldn't do that. Shouldn't dig them into the ground like that. And you're also meant to scrape the paint across with like an old credit card edge or something. And I think that would work better in an acrylic or a gouache. It's certainly not going to be a great success in watercolor. But I did go in with a fine tooth paintbrush and add little notches of gray and black on the birch trees. It's okay. I want to do this on a smaller format and I want to see if I can really solve the problem of making the birches look as good as they would look in an acrylic paint. But nonetheless, this was fun to play with and I did break out my white paint to do the moon, but it got a little blue splattered. I did experiment with splattering paint a wee bit. And I think I frankly overwatered the paper. I think this might have been done a lot better with a wet brush on dry paper. Nonetheless, I had a lot of fun with this. Someone said if you like the masking tape, you should go to masking fluid. Well, that hasn't happened yet, but it's not a bad idea. But I think I'm going to try the birches again on a much smaller paper. And I've learned a lot from the bigger one. But this is definitely one of those ones where you go, well, that was a learning experience. <laughs> I can't believe I got the light wrong on that birch tree. That's just embarrassing. But I did experiment, did a little shadowing experiment. That came out terrible. But you learn as you go. Hobbs Day, well, Project G, Project Garage, we're still working on it. And he's been really great about it. He's been in there moving things around and trying to clean things up. And that was really great. I mean, that alone, the fact that he's in there trying to move things and clean things and organize things has been really helpful. I can't always find the things he's organizing, but the garage is looking better. Is it finished? Nah. We may be a third to a half of the way through, but nah, we have a lot more to go in there. Project T, as in transcribe, I'm working on my first journal after I graduated college. I am getting a lot of nightmares from it because it was not one of the happiest times of my life. But it was a time of enormous growth and change, and I really do want to try to transcribe this if I can save my sanity. Meanwhile, I started on Project Cookbook, and this is, I got a wooden recipe box as a freebie with something else I ordered, and it's four by six cards. That's what it takes. And I realized this is an excellent thing to do for my son, that he needs recipes, he's looking at recipes, and I thought, I'm going to transcribe any recipe I have and any one I can think of so that he has his own cookbook collection. I tried this once before, and the recipe box was made of cardboard and got destroyed. Got wet one time. So I am starting over, and also I'm now keto, and that makes a difference. But I really want him to have a basic set of recipes that he can resort to when he wants to cook. So we started by transcribing the recipe he used for the insanely delicious chocolate cake that he made for my birthday. So yes, you got it right. We have Project G for garage, cleaning out the boxes. Project T for transcribe, cleaning out the old journals. Project Cookbook for my son. I'm enjoying all the projects, can you tell? Meanwhile, I guess I could also say we have Project Garden, but that's the Green Fingers report. Well, I missed my chance to get some inexpensive potting soil, but what I want to do is take some of this cardboard and lay it down over our garden plots. Now, others have suggested this recently when I started talking about Project G. They kept saying, use your cardboard in your garden. We had way too much cardboard for that, but our cardboard amounts have reduced significantly. Also, people said, are you recycling, why don't you take it to a recycling group? We don't have that here. It would be a long journey, but I guess one of the things I didn't say is I am putting it in recycling bins. So yeah, it is going into recycling, but I didn't put a big emphasis on that, my mistake. Now we're at a point where I'm thinking, okay, I do want to save the cardboard and I want to weight it down with dirt and rocks, big rocks that I can see and easily remove because I want to start blocking the weeds in the places where I want to grow things. However, we had an exciting week in that grow things department. First off, you may remember I had ordered more plants for our region to experiment with. They came. So now I'm the proud owner of four little lavenders and three dianthus and three Russian sage. 
One of my green-fingered friends said, oh, the Dianthus won't grow there. Well, we'll find out. It is all over the place. I've been running around using my plant spotter, taking pictures of plants that are doing well in our region and that do not seem to have access to easy watering. So I've learned a lot. So I'm not sure about the Dianthus. I'm looking for something to creep along the ground in this one big area where there was a garbage piece of lawn that should never have been planted and clearly could not survive here. It was sod and it could not break through the clay soil underneath. It was just stupid. They stuck it in there rapidly to sell the house. So this big area that I've been looking at for 20 years and finally said there's got to be a good creeping thing that can take drought that we will put in there. We shall see. The Dianthus is one possible thing. I don't think so because you just don't see that around here very much. Nonetheless, you do see a lot of Russian sage and you do see a lot of lavender, surprisingly. So this evening, after much carrying on by me, the boys decided to dig some strips out for me so I could plant these plants. And you can see the first plants, which are the lavender patch. All four of them lined up there. They've got a beautiful view, as you can see, over the corral and the valley there. They're sitting there in that incredible sunset. That picture is great. And we got those in tonight. My husband finally had to take a pick to the soil because it was so compacted and dry. But it is right within reach of our hose, so I know that it's going to be watered when we water everybody else. In other words, I set up the experimental garden here to be within easy reach of the hose so we make sure they get watered. And apparently these guys do okay once you get them mature enough. And I'm thinking, well, like the spearmint, except the spearmint is probably a little more water loving. This species of lavender is supposed to be drought tolerant. That's weird to me, but I do trust the people I bought them from. We will see. It would be nice to have a lavender patch. I don't know if I need 20 feet of it like I have with the spearmint, but it would be nice just to have some of it. Oh yeah, I'm allergic. I don't care. I would like that around. And, you know, I don't think we're going to have a huge amount of it, but I think I will see. This is the experimental patch. We will see if these guys can root and take over, particularly since they're in an area where they are likely to get watered. We haven't put in the Russian sage. That's really great on drought, and that will be going down the side of the driveway. Like I said, the Dianthus, that ground is very compacted. We will see. In the meantime, the spearmint is blooming wildly. And when you walk by it now during the daylight hours, you get buzzing. There were at least 30 bees on it. I have no idea where these guys are coming from. But it's been fun because suddenly everybody kicked off and started blooming. So we have blooming heck around the farm here. You can see the China Rose, which has been a great bloomer this summer. We've been watering more and that rose has really paid us back for it. It's by our garage windows. You can see it there, all beautiful. The new hyssop is blooming. This thing is really, really happy where we put it. And that is one of the great successes of the summer. So yes, hyssop or hummingbird mint, I am probably going to put in a bunch more of those because they withstood it. Nobody ate them and they are just, they, it is just so happy and it's turning into a bush right in front of my eyes. And this is a perennial. I am thrilled. This is what I wanted. Meanwhile, you can see one of the Dianthus optimistic little guy. He's blooming in his pot from the people who sent him to us. We haven't even planted him. He's trying to bloom. So I put in his picture. I hope he's going to make it. And then you can see the spearmint patch going insane, covering all the holes, blooming like a monster. So we have just had a great time. Everything is trying to bloom here on the farm. It is not cool. It's in the 80s. It just recently, like two days ago, dropped from the 90s. But I guess after the high 90s, everybody's optimistic. And we are getting rain and mist. So they are getting watered at night. On the calendar, oh, it's gotten crowded. Yay. First of all, my buddies over at the Santa Clarita Valley Free Craft Supplies, they're doing a giveaway again, like they did earlier in September, and a meetup at our local Canyon Country Park on Saturday, October 7th at 10 a.m. So I do believe I will be taking some very old rubber stamps down this time. I am just loving this progressive emptying my craft stuff. I'm just loving this. 
Someone had said she wanted patterns. I've got a lot of sewing patterns I'm willing to get rid of vintage, so I'll probably take those as well. Meanwhile, Yarnopoly, my buddies, my crochet group, their next meetup is on Saturday, October 14th from 1 to 4 p.m. And they are also setting up a trip down to Rhinebeck West, which will be held at the Knitting Tree down by LAX on Saturday, October 21st, the very following weekend. So a group of us are going to go down. I'm hoping to get a place in Cheryl's car or just to take myself. I was thinking seriously about just taking a train ride down, spending the night at a hotel and then doing a gradual train ride up or riding up with the ladies after it's over. So this is so exciting, you know, and also the Cognitive Fiber Retreat is coming up hot on the heels of those events on Saturday, November 11th, 2023. I will be there starting Friday night, November 10th, after I see my patients. Those of you who are going, please wait for me. I want to go to dinner with you all if you're coming in on Friday night. I know we have a few people who are going to show up Saturday morning at 9 a.m. No, really, you really want to be there Friday night. If you can, that's where the fun starts. But we'll find out. This is what happened with the old cognitive fiber retreat we used to have in Tehachapi, that people would come up on Saturday morning. But since it was a distance, a lot of people start showing up on Friday afternoon. And gradually, this thing just expanded. I do want you to realize if you are at CFR, that it will continue Sunday morning. I hope a group of us will be going out to breakfast because I'm going to need feedback and suggestions and we're going to need to plan out CFR 2024 if everybody is interested or many people are interested. Meanwhile, the Evolution of Psychotherapy Conference that is in Anaheim at the Convention Center right on top of Disneyland on December 12th through 17th. I'm pretty sure I will at least be there. I think I'm thinking the 14th through the 17th, but since I can practice therapy, and I do have a lot of hotel credits. I may just go early and spend a few nights seeing patients in the hotel because I have all the soundproofing equipment, and security stuff I need and just be in a different place for a few days. Give that to myself as a break. I also will be taking Romule off December 25th through January 1st. And I haven't put that on the calendar, but I guess I probably should. I'm also looking forward to Thanksgiving Friday off that I've put in for my vacation days on these days and I still have extra vacation time because I haven't been using it. So this is all very, very exciting. Meanwhile, Minerva gets the last word. I was taking a bath and Minerva just got into the tub and got interested in the way the water was entering the tub and she was playing with it and everything else. So of course I took a lot of pictures. But then I realized something. Uh, well, no, it's not true. I didn't realize anything. I made it up. I just decided, this was on Saturday, yesterday, September 16th, I decided to declare tomorrow, that is today, September 17th, Sunday, as National Stay at Home with Your Cat and Read Books Day. So there we go. September 17th, for all eternity, National Stay at Home with Your Cat and Read Books Day. Sure, I made it up, but please tell everybody, we're going to have to start observing this. And remember, they created a holiday around Thanksgiving called Wolf and Newt, and Wolf Newt is about celebrating your dogs. Well, the cats need equal time. So, National Stay at Home with Your Cat and Read Books Day, because really, who are you going to read books with better than a cat? They just drape themselves on you for warmth and enjoy your stillness as you read. I think we should start considering how to celebrate this. I'm suspecting that pumpkin spice tea might be a good choice because it's in mid-September, although I'm always willing to go for hot cocoa. And perhaps bits of chocolate or perhaps what's good donuts should go with it. Anyway, so Minerva's last word is you people better start recognizing that it's time to celebrate National Stay at Home with your cat and read books day. In the meantime, everybody remember we are a community. So when we take care of each other, we're actually taking care of ourselves. And when we take care of ourselves, of course, by extension, we're keeping everybody else safe. It works in a circle. So with all that in mind, please remember, get your shots, have a few masks on the side if you're coming to CFR, because we don't know what's going to be going on there. But basically, the name of the game is everybody stay safe, take care of each other, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. So we have come to the end of another episode of Cognitive. Please do not use this podcast 
to diagnose yourself. If you think you are having a mental health problem, please contact a licensed mental health professional. Show notes for these episodes can be found at cognitivepodcast, all one word, dot blogspot.com. Episodes can be found at iTunes under the name Cognitive Podcast, but also can be found posted next to the show notes on the Blogspot page. Thank you so much for listening. Everybody stay safe, take care of each other, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.